Hey guys and welcome to Riggs Garage. Today I'm going to talk about a Honda Mini-Me swap. First of all, what is a Mini-Me swap? That is a non-VTEC Honda four-cylinder bottom end with a VTEC head bolted on it. It's going to give you some performance advantages. I wrote down some notes so I could talk about this in detail and give you guys some good uh, part numbers and advice that I learned along the way. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe if, uh, if you like this video. Thank you. All right, here's the finished product. This thing runs great. I don't have the VTEC hookup yet because I need to get a P28 computer. I think I've got a lead on one right now, but this thing's looking nice and clean. All right, this video is about the Mini-Me swap concerning a D15B7 bottom end and a D16Z6 head. So if you're doing that project, this is probably going to be a useful video for you. I hope it will be. All right, so why should you do this swap? It's going to add some pep to your car. It's not going to be crazy amount of power because you are using off-the-shelf reliable, remember that, Honda parts. I drive this car a lot and it needs to be really reliable. So that's what I'm going for. I'm not going for crazy power. And this kind of lined up for some maintenance stuff that I needed to do anyway. So um, I don't want to talk about it too much, but I just was lazy and never did the timing belt. I got this car for a thousand bucks. My timing belt slipped and I bent my B7 valves. <laughs> so um, I went ahead and thought I would change maintenance into an upgrade at the same time. With the Mini-V swap here, you get the thinner multi-layer steel head gasket and you're going to get somewhere around 10 to 1 compression, so that's going to bump your power. This head breathes much better, that's going to bump your power. You have a more aggressive cam profile from the Z6 engine, that's bumping horsepower as well, plus the VTEC, the variable valve timing that gives you that extra rip at the top end. Alright, let's look at the Z6 parts that I put on the engine. Down in the description below, I'm going to put a list of pretty comprehensive and detailed threads from dseries.org and the Honda forums. They're going to show you exactly what goes into this. There are things that I referenced uh, when I was doing my research as well. All right, first, let's look at the head. This is a Z6 head I got off Facebook Marketplace. All of them are used now, unless you buy one from somebody who just had it machined and they had paperwork. I would recommend having the head reconditioned. When I had this head reconditioned, it had at least two bent valves also from who knows what. But um, check out my video above. I'll put a link up there um, on having your head reconditioned. All right, I used the Z6 valve cover as well. I painted it with wrinkle black paint. And if you have a B7 engine, you're going to have to use a VTEC valve cover or at least a valve cover that has the spark plugs on the front of the engine because the B7 has the spark plugs on the rear side of the head. You don't have to use the Z6 intake manifold, but I chose to because it has much fatter runners when you put this side by side with a B7 intake manifold. So this is going to breathe much better. I went ahead and used it and uh, the gasket there as well. Now I measured the throttle bodies and I went ahead and used the original B7 throttle body because it's the same diameter as the Z6. However, the map sensor is on the firewall for my B7 engine and I didn't really want to change this. I wanted to keep it plug and play. So um, the Z6 has the map sensor built into this and mine was snapped off so I really didn't have much of a choice but to use the B7 so I put a fresh gasket in there and I used the B7 throttle body. For the cam gear, I went with a VMS Racing adjustable cam gear. It's black and it looks really nice with the engine. However, you can use a factory cam gear. I'm going to link to a very detailed thread down below that concerns cam gear timing with the Minimi swap. You see, the deck height of this head is slightly shorter than a B7 head, which is slightly taller. So that's going to take your um, cam timing. And if you have a, a non-adjustable sprocket, you will need to use the correct one from the correct year. They're different. There's a 4.75 degree difference 
in the cam angle. So check out the thread below before you do the job. I set mine at zero for now and it runs perfect. Also note when you put the Mini-Me together you're going to use the timing belt kit for the block. So this is a B7 block so I'm using a B7 water pump, B7 tensioner pulley and spring. And then I'll talk to you about the timing belt that I use here in a second. For the timing belt since the Z6 head deck height is slightly shorter than the B7, I used a Gates timing belt. Part number is T224. Now this timing belt has 104 teeth instead of the 106 teeth that the stock B7 timing belt has. Again, use a 104 tooth timing belt. It's slightly shorter to account for the lower engine deck height. Let's go over to the distributor here. You will need to use a Z6 distributor with the Z6 head. Now I tried this, I tried putting my B7 distributor on here for fun. These three tabs, they don't line up at all. Now, a uh, fun trick that I learned through necessity, um, the ignition coil from the B7 distributor will work and the Z6 distributor because I bolted this junkyard distributor on and I got no spark and I know for sure that the engine ran perfectly like a day before that so I did check voltage here to make sure I was getting fire to the distributor that I did so I went ahead and swapped coils and now this works this also uses the same distributor cap and rotor as the B7 because I actually had brand new stuff for my B7 and just put it on here and it worked perfect Spark plug wires, also, you're going to need different spark plug wires. I tried my B7 spark plug wires, and they just don't work. Um, they do not fit over this lip right here, and they will not contact the spark plug, and you'll have no spark. I got these VMS racing ones. They cost the exact same amount as the ones at O'Reilly, like 40 bucks or something like that. They're much fatter. I also need to organize them because it's kind of driving me crazy how they're crisscrossing here. But it does run. Now let's talk about the head gasket. I used a D16Y8 three layer multi layer steel. This is what you're going to see 9915PT. I used from Felpro. And you can see on here that it has D16Y8. D16Z6. This is a thinner head gasket. Also for the intake manifold gasket, here's, here's the part number I use for that. Like I said, I have not hooked up the VTEC solenoid to the computer yet. I need a P28 computer. I'll provide a link below um, to some videos that show you how to hook that up. So right now these are hanging. I did get pigtails to hook those up. So these are going to plug in and I'll run those wires back to certain pins on the ECU uh, to make VTEC kick in when it's time. I think I got these off Amazon for 8 or $10. Alright, a few tips and tricks. Uh, when you're doing a head gasket job, make sure you clean and prep those surfaces really, really well. Um, I did a video on a quick way to clean. Uh, check the video above and uh, see if you're doing it right. Make sure you clean out all the head bolts with a tap. This is gonna keep your uh, torque specs accurate. Also, hit the threads on the head bolts with a wire wheel. Make sure things are really clean. Put a drop of oil on there and then torque those down in the sequence um, that's in your shop manual. This is a great time to throw in all five of your engine mounts. I did one here, two, three is back in there. With this off, it's not bad. And we had four, and then down below there's five. While you're doing this, this is a big maintenance project. Um, you're doing a timing belt job as well, so make sure you're following your shop manual on that and do the right things with it. There are lots of good forum posts out there and lots of good YouTube videos, so check those out. A quick question that I had and I had to search around for a while. The question was, uh, can you run the stock PO6 ECU, that's the non-VTEC ECU, with this Mini-Me swap? 
And the answer is definitely yes. You're just not gonna have VTEC kicking in. Right now, I am running uh, the PO6. The engine's a lot more lively, but you can tell that it's not on the right fuel map and it's not getting enough fuel up top um, as would be required by an engine that's screaming with the Mad VTEC. Another question, what is the budget? Um, I've got around $500 in this, and people might be like, wow, you can buy a turbo kit for $500. Well, sure you can, but all the supporting mods to make a turbo kit work, and then having almost no reliability with a lot of cheap parts and things like that, it's, it's not worth it to me right now. You could consider this a step one to a nice turbo build. Once I get rods and pistons in here, then this is gonna breathe much better with the Mini-Me swap, and maybe it's time to do a quality turbo kit, but right now, I had to do this maintenance anyway, so I might as well uh, bump it up a little bit from stock. My budget is about $500, so let's see. Um, the head and the intake and the valve cover, I got all that for $100. I got that new header for 20 bucks. Um, you might want to use an exhaust manifold off of a Z6. By all means, don't use your B7 exhaust manifold because that thing is pretty restrictive looking. I got this header, it's got a thick flange and it seals well, I got it for $20. The VMS cam gear was about 50 bucks. The gaskets I spent, I think around 80 ish. I think you can get them cheaper online, even the name brand ones, definitely use name brand gaskets. Um, but I was kind of in a rush to get the engine put together, so I bought them at retail price at O'Reilly. Um, then your random paint, fluids, you'll need to do an oil change at the end of all this, and uh, it's a good time to put in new coolant as well. So throw that in, and then you've got a fully maintained car that just rips a little bit more. Hey, if you have any questions, hit me up below. I could have missed something. And also, if you like the video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I've got lots of other fun projects. I just film what I work on. This Honda is my daily driver, but um, you can see behind me, we've got the 70 Mustang, and then there's the, uh, there's the 63 Chevy. It's got a big block Chevy in it, and uh, it, it rips. Thanks, guys.